In April of 1940, German forces laid siege against Hegra in Norway, though ultimately the forces in Hegra had to surrender. The mark they left in history stays with us today. We have here Halls of Hegra. This was sent to me by the publisher. We have, I'm so sorry, oh my goodness, Trumpet Games. There we go, there we go. Trumpet Games. Um, they were kind enough to send this to me. It's been nice speaking with them. And we're going to do a playthrough of this historical game. This is a solo-only game. This is the only mode you can play it in. I'm going to give you my final thoughts at the end. Howdy! Welcome back. I'm Mike, your board gaming every dude, and this is the Halls of Hegra. Now let's go through setup. All right, so we are setting up this board. We see at the top, I don't have enough room on the camera. You would actually lay a series of cards at the top. I'll show you exactly what those are. So we have, our first one is mobilization. You're gonna shuffle up all the mobilization cards and put them above at mobilization. There are, if you want a more challenging game, there are cards that say advanced. As you can see there, in Siege 1 and Siege 2, remove those from your first game. If you want more of a challenge, you can put those in. You might randomly draw them. For our concerns, they are out of the game. Then take your first attack cards, shuffle them up, and put them at first attack at the top of the board. Take your Siege 1 cards, shuffle them up, same deal, put Siege 1 right here. Do the same thing with your Siege 2 cards, shuffle them up, put them at the top of the board. And finally, your three last stand cards, shuffle them up, put them at the last stand on the board there. Optionally, if you want to make the game more challenging in the future, there are four mission cards. You can draw one of those, either randomly, you know, draw two, pick one, or pick the one that you want, put it to the side. If you complete that mission, it gives you benefits. If you don't, it brings some negatives. It adds an extra layer of challenge to the game. We are not playing with missions. They look cool, but I have not survived yet. So let's survive the regular game first. All right, get those missions out of the way. Pretty cool. We will go over the coup and the retreat markers once we get to the bottom of the board. Next, you have air tiles. Your air tiles look like this. Each one has its own thing, so you're gonna pair them up. So we've got two injure one defenders, and you just randomly place them on the tiles up here. Boom, 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 as long as they are matching pairs. Put them in any order. There's nothing in the instructions that says they must be in a certain order. You're going to take one of your red cubes, your markers, you're gonna put it on the number two on the infantry track. Then you're gonna take your, or I guess it's your artillery, excuse me. Then you're gonna take your six artillery and place them in the six rightmost spaces. After that, you're gonna come down here, take one of your supply cubes and put it under one supply. As we increase in the game, let's say you get five supplies, one cube in there represents five, one cube in there represents 10 cubes. Easy to keep track of. Take another marker for your supply track and you're going to put it at the number four with the underline. When you're setting up, whenever you see an underline, that's where you place the marker. So we start at four. As the game continues, this is going to go to the right, which means bad things, less supplies for us to get. Don't worry, nothing in tired or rest. You are going to take three soldiers and two volunteers, as well as one commander and place them in ready. Then you're going to come down here. You're going to cover your defensive positions. You're gonna put, def you've got these defensive position tiles, defensive position A, B, and C. Cover all of those, it means for now, those are damaged. So you'll have to repair them to remove it and be able to place a worker there in the future. Then we're gonna come down to defense and we've got the underline, so we're gonna put this marker at zero. Then we have our mobilization board. You'll see this is two-sided. We're gonna start the game on mobilization, then we're gonna advance to the first attack, and then finally our siege. So while it's on mobilization, you've got the underlines of three and one, so fear of three, doubt of one. We got that all set up, we're good. Going to the bottom, we've got our turn track. Just place your marker at turn one. As we advance through the game, this turn track goes up, until we get to the end of the game, the last stand. 
if you want to make the game more challenging, you have these coup and retreat tiles. You'll see here we've got a coup on turn three normally. You want to make it harder, you can make the coup happen earlier. So put it on track two. You want to make it even harder, you can put it there. It, also, you can add to that with the retreat. The retreat normally happens at turn six. You can make it harder by lowering the, going back on the retreat, boom, and the game just gets harder and harder. All right, so we're not using those. We're not trying to make this harder, but you have that option if you want to. Let's go up into our maintenance and infirmary. We don't need to do anything yet. Don't worry, I'm going to cover what you're going to do. Fire artillery. You've got three guns over, well, three gun one slots. You've got gun one, gun two. First thing you're going to do is you're going to take your target markers. That's what I'm calling them. They might be called something else. I forget. And where did my other target markers go? I had three more. I don't know where they went. I'm going to have to find them because Gravy Davis knows we're going to need them. There they are right here. So they have a jammed side. That means the gun is jammed. Then they have another side. You'll see some of them have a target. Two of them have a blank. The instructions don't really tell me what order, um, so I just flip them all over on their back and randomly turn three over. If you get a blank, that means it's, it's just of no use, right? There still is a reason to uh, repair it, and you'll see why in a bit. But for now, just randomly place them, boom, boom, boom. And gun one, gun one, and gun one. So they're all damaged. We're going to have to repair these before we can use them. Nothing to do over here. We're going to come over to our morale track over here. This just tells us some instructions for morale. But for our morale track, just place your marker on zero and you're good to go. Then we've got our surrender conditions. Because just like in real history, the best outcome really is, well... You can change history and end with a German retreat if you're amazing. Uh, that's got to be pretty hard to get. But honorable surrender is what we're going for. That's what you're going to start with. Honorable surrender right over there. Now we're going to go up onto our map up here. We don't have to do anything for the Viernes airfield. We'll cover that. Don't worry about it. We've got our marker here for the snow tiles. You see it's underlined at three. Place your marker at three. We're going to start on a cloudy day. Put your marker right there in the middle. For suspicion, we get to start at one where the underline is. Then we have our snow tiles. Flip them to their back like this, shuffle them up, and randomly make yourself a tile. Then we've got our supplies. You've got one, two, three, four, five different supply uh, So you separate them into their types and you place the supply tiles to the, to the left, the leftmost one, put all three of them up there. The rest, these other four, put them to the side in your reserve. Everything over here is what we'll call the reserve moving forward. So we put our remaining supply tiles, our remaining little red marker over in the reserve. You've also got these, not the patrols, I forget what they're called, infantry maybe, over here, and we just put them like that, boom. Now, we want to create our recruit bag. We've already put our volunteers that we need in the ready. Additionally, what you're going to do is you're going to take six of your doubt markers. So that's these little purple ones. Take six of them, put them in your reserve. You're going to put three soldiers in the reserve and three volunteers as well. All the rest of your recruits go into the recruit bag. That means you're going to have one... And you're going to have the remaining volunteers, the remaining soldiers, all of the hunters, and all of the medics. So three hunters, three medics, remaining volunteers, remaining soldiers, all go into the bag. Boom, boom, boom. And we're going to get to draw from this, as this is also a bag builder of a game. Now, we want to take all of our patrol tokens, every one of them. They look like this. They have a number on one side, and this right there. You're going to put them all into the bag. Boom. Easy. For our hit bag, we are going to place only two tiles in the beginning. We're going to place one artillery tile and one miss. The rest of our hit tiles we're going to see look like this here. There's three more artillery. And then we have the different broken or damaged tiles that are similar to like gun one 
and the defensive positions, which means when we repair, we remove this and we put it into the hit bag. So we've got all these. And then of course your missed tiles, you can put those to the side as well. It's a bag builder. We'll be adjusting that bag as we continue playing. Then we've got our morale cards. Take all of your despair cards. They're all exactly the same. Just put them in a pile. All of your hope, they're exactly the same. Put them in a pile. Then you've got all of your high morale cards. Take one despair. That's right, one despair, because you'll see it has high morale on the back. Take one despair card, shuffle it into your high morale, and put it here. Take one hope card. You'll see it has low morale on it. Take one hope card, put it into your low morale deck, shuffle it up, and put it to the side. Ladies and gentlemen, am I missing anything? I'm missing my dice tray. Let me go get my dice tray. This is a good point to pause. If you want to support this channel, I appreciate it so much. It means a lot. Hit the like button. That helps other people to find it. In theory, who really knows? Subscribe to see more of my nonsense or to learn about these great games, these great designers, publishers that we get to feature here. If you want to support monetarily, um, there will be a link in the description below as well as the pinned comment. With It's a collaboration with my local game store. You click that link. It takes you to what's featured right now that you can purchase either uh, card sleeves or board games that you get if you use the code board games for one when you check out you get 10 percent off and if you're in the continental united states you get free shipping so that is competing with amazon for a great price for some really cool games if you don't want to do it don't worry about it a percentage of that kicks back to me that i get to use to buy the games that i can feature on the channel all right, let's get back to the game. Since this is a teach and play, I'm going to teach you as we play, but don't worry. I'm putting chapters all throughout so you can skip to the section you want if you would like. Well, I encourage and appreciate it when you stay here with me for the playthrough as we live out history in this story. This isn't just a game where we are moving things around. We are living a real event. We are telling a story. And I hope you can be here with me for the whole story. But let me lay out how the game plays. It takes place just like in history. It starts with mobilization. First, the German forces are mobilizing against us, the Norwegians. So we, in the beginning stages, turns one through three, we are just gearing up for the battle that's coming. We're gathering supplies, trying to protect ourselves, Get prepared. Now comes the first attack. That's turns four, five, and six. First attack happens outside the walls, and we're trying to defend ourselves while still building ourselves up, getting ready for the inevitable siege that's coming. Then comes the siege. Siege one. We're just going to try to survive it while still recovering as much as possible because you know what's coming next? Siege 2, which culminates in the last stand. In order to survive that last stand, we, have a, we need to have enough surviving healthy recruits. Healthy recruits means they're not in the infirmary. They can be tired, rested, ready, out on the board doing stuff. As long as they're not in the infirmary, they count as healthy. How many do we need to have? We need to have as many as are indicated by our surrender level. Honorable surrender means we need to have five healthy recruits at the end of the last stand in order to win the game. And then we have an honorable surrender. That's how we win. That's victory. Of course, if it was a truce, if somehow we get this down, then we would only need four. A German retreat, we would only need three. Or our surrender can get worse. If we go up to just plain old surrender, we would need six. Unconditional surrender, if we go all the way up there, we lose the game. So there's another way to lose the game. At the end of every turn, you do a surrender check. If we ever have three or more defenders that have died and are in the morgue, we lose the game immediately. Uh, or excuse me, no, we don't lose. We raise the surrender level up. We lose the game immediately if we reach that unconditional surrender right up there. Also, we lose, let's say that we are at um, honorable surrender, but we have less than five 
healthy recruits out somewhere, then we would also lose the game. I hope I made that clear. You win by surviving the last stand. All right, so how are we gonna go through this board? Well, later in the game, we're actually gonna come to this part last. This is where the airstrikes and artillery start happening during the sieges. It gets pretty brutal to survive. Um, and it makes you really appreciate this point in history, how these people survived in Hegra as long as they did under siege. Um, it's, it's remarkable. So we've got the supplies over here. We're gonna use supplies in order to refresh recruits. So after we use them, then they get tired. To refresh them, we need to use supplies to help them recuperate, right? So then they come over into ready. That's what supplies are for. Then comes defending the walls. Of course, if, we, if we're not able to defend the walls, we're gonna lose immediately. So that's where we want to be able to repair so we can fire at the Germans and defend our walls. During mobilization, we're gonna try to keep the morale of our troops up, of our recruits really, because it's, it's normal people, volunteers and things like that. There are some soldiers in there. Anyway, that's what's going on here. We also want to keep our doubt under control because if people are doubtful of the ability to survive this, then it's going to get a lot harder later in the game. When we flip this over, we're going to see that we have a different board where now the infantry are, and that's what I'm going to call them. Forgive me if I get the, the name of that wrong. But anyway, the infantry are going to be coming and charging at our walls. So we are going to be defending against that and firing artillery to try to keep the infantry back. It just gets worse once we get to the siege. There's a lot more infantry that are going to be coming to take over the walls. And again, surrender is next to impossible to prevent. You just want to have an honorable surrender or even a surrender is fine as long as you survive it. All right, so there we go. Put you back there. Then we come over to this section where we're able to fire artillery. We're going to place workers to be able to do this stuff. If we repair these guns, these are powerful for defending our walls. We can also fire artillery onto the field up here, as at certain points, some of these artillery are going to be placed on the field, and we want to fire to remove that artillery. Also, there are patrols that are going to come out. In order to gather supplies, we can fire this artillery to get rid of those patrols and clear the way so we can keep getting supplies and survive the siege. Also, you've got an airfield. Bad things come from the airfield. So you can fire on the airfield to prevent airstrikes or to prevent these airstrike tiles from being placed in the hit bag where you then draw them and have to play them out, which is never good. Um, you can also do, you can also fire on the Viren's airfield in order to increase morale or to move your surrender marker down one level, which is pretty awesome. Pretty sure it's down one level. Yes, down one level. All right, then we've got our maintenance. That's for our camp here. We're able to do things like shoveling snow, uh, repairing our guns or anything that is damaged. Shoveling snow, the good thing is, um, as we go through this, the snow marker might go up. If it goes up too high, then we have to draw a hit tile, always bad. Or we can shovel snow and bring it down. If we shovel enough snow to get all the way to the bottom, we get to flip one of these tiles, which is gonna have some great benefits for us. It can even add additional actions on the board, like an infirmary, like a gun to, a medicine cabinet, a map room, a radio, a field telephone. We don't know what we're gonna get. Something's in there. So we can shovel as much snow as we want. We can repair stuff. We can bolster our defenses. This is very important. Where did this come from? I don't know. I'll figure it out eventually. It came from somewhere. We'll figure it out together. Anyway, uh, when we go to here, then we will need to use our defenses when, once we get to our first attack. So we will want to be raising our defenses. We can do it during mobilization too. The higher you, your defense, of course, the better off you're going to fare against attacks from the infantry. So you can use that, or you can use it to add mistiles to the hit bag, which increases your chances of surviving those hits. It's fantastic. Boom, boom. That's where you went. I knew you went somewhere. Okay, anyway, then we've got promote. So let's say we have a volunteer. A volunteer is not a soldier. They can't do the same things as a soldier. So if I promote by placing a volunteer here, then I can also place my commander 
render here, and by promoting, I now replace that volunteer with a soldier. They go to the tired area, and I now have a soldier instead of a volunteer. Pretty cool. Go back there. Oh my goodness. And you go back there. Oh my wow. What a mess. Okay. Let's check here. Inspire. Inspire is very effective. It lets us move our morale up. If your morale goes down at the end of your turn, you have to draw cards according to the instructions of your low morale. You draw a low morale card, always bad. Avoid it at all costs. If you get to draw high morale cards, that's awesome. They come with great benefits. So it's wonderful to keep that morale up. Very important. Then we would come to our infirmary. At certain points, our workers, our recruits, can get injured. If they get injured, we have to place them in the infirmary where they slowly heal. We can use our medical recruits in order to speed up that recovery process. But anyway, if you get too many injured, they start going in the waiting room. That's bad. If they're in the waiting area for too long, they die. They go in the morgue. Very bad. You don't want that to happen. So I'm going to come there, heal people as they're in there. You've also got your supply runs going. This is how we get more supplies as well as some special abilities at the top that we might be able to gain later, or really early in the game based on decisions that we make. So once we're in here, we might have some recruits that are gonna go on supply runs. They're able to move along the determined paths to get to supplies and bring those supplies back. We're going to cover that when we have our first turn there. Sometimes they will run into patrols. When they run into patrols, suspicion goes up. If the suspicion goes up high enough, then we have to place more patrols on the board and reset this back down to three. It tells us what to do right there. A lot of what we have to do is easy to follow because it's on the board, and I appreciate that. I think I covered everything. We're ready for our first turn Mobilization, day one, where's my day marker? Where did you go? First thing we do at the beginning of every day is find out what's happening. We flip over our event card from our mobilization deck. Mobilization, it's a cloudy day. The prospect of bitter cold and the frostbite is taking its toll on the recruits. They're all here behind the fortress. What's gonna happen? You lose two morale. Oh dear, that is brutal. We move our mor morale marker down two. At the end of this turn, if I don't raise this up, we have to draw three low morale cards and resolve two. They are very bad. Very bad. We don't want that. I gotta fix this. All right. Now we add one doubt disc to our recruits bag. Not great. And now we get to draw from this bag. So this is where it's a bag builder. We get to draw up to four recruits from this bag. We can stop at any point. If I pull out a recruit, so I pull out my first one, medical. Okay. I'm going to keep going. Again, I get to draw up to four. Here's the catch. If I draw a doubt disc, that purple one, then I have to stop. And I only get to keep one of my choice of what I've drawn out. If I don't draw a doubt disc, I get everything that I pulled out. I can stop at any point, so push your luck. There are only two doubt discs in there right now. So this is where you see we want to keep our doubt level down because if it goes up, you'll see if I get up to here, I'd have to put two doubt discs in every time I see that symbol, or three. There's no way to get it down to zero, but if I lower doubt, I am able to increase morale by one um, for every turn that this is down there. All right, here we go. I'm gonna keep going because the odds this early, the odds of me pulling it out are pretty low. So I'm gonna pull one, two. All right, I've got a volunteer. I'm gonna go for three and then I'm gonna stop. Please don't be doubt. All right, so I've got two medical officers. Wow, um, two nurses, two doctors, whatever, and a volunteer. So I'm gonna place them in the, cause I'm stopping. I don't know, what do you think? You want me to push my luck and go for four? No. All right, so there's two, one and two, and one volunteer. Here's the cool thing. Every time you pull a volunteer, 
you get to add one supply. That's awesome. We've done that. We have finished up our event card. You'll see over to the right these symbols here. Those relate to when you get injured. If a card ever tells you to injure a recruit, but it doesn't tell you which one, you go in priority list from top to bottom. So this means I would have to injure an officer. How do I deal with an injury? I take that officer from wherever they are. Um, so if it's in tired, rest, or ready, and we didn't use it, then this would apply. If they are assigned to a section, you can't injure them. If they're already in an infirmary, you can't injure them. But he's there, so in this case, I would take him, and then I would roll a dice. Boom. It's a four. I would place my injured recruit at an available bed at number four. And that's it. Place our event card in the discard pile. Now I get to assign the recruits. All right. You'll notice that there are certain symbols for each of the designated areas, the action spots. For example, this has the commander and it has the number two. What that means is the commander is worth two recruits. So this says two recruits, it says times two, two recruits are required to make this action. So I could place any two recruits, it doesn't matter, there, and I could take that action. Or, since the commander is worth two, I could place him there, and that satisfies the need. You'll see some other spots like here, we have an X through the commander. That means for shoveling snow, the commander cannot be used for that. He does not shovel snow. He's too busy commanding. However, a hunter, <clears throat> well, hello puberty, a hunter is worth two recruits. So only one is required, so I can place anyone but a commander there, and I can shovel snow one time. If I place a hunter there, I can shovel snow twice. That means I can move this back two times for one hunter. I don't have any hunters, so it doesn't really matter, does it? And then you go down here, we'll see we can't use a commander to repair, we can't use a commander to bolster, we cannot use, uh, or we cannot promote a, I, I guess we'll call him a medic. We cannot promote a medic, because it has an X there. So we can only promote hunters or volunteers to become soldiers. To do that, one, since it's black there, one commander is required, and then one of whoever it is that we are recruiting. All right, got that. Inspire is going to require two, and we can use the commander to be worth two recruits. Firing requires two recruits. We cannot use a volunteer. We cannot use a hunter. We cannot use a medic. In other words, we can only use soldiers, or we can use the commander for that. And over here, firing at the Germans, each spot only requires one. And we can only, well, we can place anybody there. Anybody except medics. Medics cannot be placed there. And it's only um, one per slot here. All right. So this one's different. Normally, you, if it says times one, you can stack. You can have multiple ones to take that action. Firing at the Germans is different, or I guess it's defensive positions. Defensive positions is different. You can only place one here, so let's say put that there. Um, and these workers stay. Most of all the other workers actually end up becoming tired after we use the action. You're going to see that. Uh, so if I took the treat one patient action, after I take that, I put that recruit over in the tired section. However, it's different with firing at the Germans' defensive positions. They stay there all the time until they get injured. If they get injured, you move them to the infirmary. Also, if I replace them, so let's say I take a soldier, I'm like, I want a soldier there instead of a volunteer, replace it and put that volunteer that was replaced in the tired section. All right, I think we've covered everything. The infirmary, the medic is worth two workers. So you need one here to take the action. And if I did that, let's say this soldier was injured, then I would put a volunteer there. And what it allows me to do is treat one patient in one bed. In other words, move them up. Once they get all the way up here to five to six, if we move them up, they are healthy and they go back to tired. If I were to place a medic there, I could take that treat action twice. So instead of going up one, he would go boom, boom. Or if there were multiple, I could move up one or the other, something like that. 
we will cover the waiting area once we actually get there. I don't need to worry too much about it. All right. Here we go. Oh, yeah. With this red marker, since we drew from the bag, how did we know we could draw four when we were pulling from the bag? Because of where this marker is for the supplies. See how it's at number four? That means I can draw four. When this goes to the right, I can only draw up to three. When this goes to the right again, I can only draw up to... All right, so what do I need to do? Well, one thing's for sure. I need to raise morale. So... As important as other things are, this needs to come up. So we're going to raise morale by placing our commander here. That only lets me move the morale marker up one. I need to move it up two. Here's the other thing. At the end of the turn, we're going to have morale modifiers. So if I get my doubt marker down by two, then I could raise my morale up at the end of the turn. If it's a red day, or if these boxes are red, which is turns 6, 9, 10, 11... That also means that we have to move the morale down one. If we are out of supplies, we move the morale down. If there are any defenders in the waiting area, then we move the morale down. That's bad. And then we go down one per defender in the morgue. We don't want that at all. And then once we get to the first attack, we're going to have some of the infantry in sectors. See how this is red? If there are any infantry in this red sector then your morale is going to go down and we'll we'll cover that in a little more details there's a little more to that than what i said there but gives you an introduction all right so we're going to get morale up once now i have i'm going to place a soldier in thing is i don't need i don't need to be in defensive positions yet i will need to be in it but I don't need it yet. So I'm not going to I'm not going to place anyone there. I need to I need to get I need to negotiate. Boy, I need to get fear down. I need to get fear down. And here's why. Because at the end of the third turn, or I'm going to call it the third day, we have a coup. When a coup happens, it says draw x discs um, wait, 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 no, no, not that, it's somewhere in here, fear, mad, there it is, yeah, it's draw X discs from the recruit bag and place them in the reserve. X is where the fear marker is, redraw any doubt discs. So basically what that means is the higher the fear, the more recruits I have to take out of the bag and put in the reserve, which means there's more chances in the future of drawing doubt instead of drawing an actual um, recruit that I can use. So I really like that fear to be down. So I'm gonna put two volunteers over here to negotiate. I'm going, or I could go down, I could get the doubt down by two. I think long-term that's gonna be what's worth the most. So I'm gonna, also gonna put two more. I'm going to put my medics there and we're going to take the doubt down by two. And I hope this is going to pay off in the end. Um, shoveling snow, it's not going to pay off at this point. It is a great idea, but I'm not going to do it. There's no need to fire at this point. And I do need to repair, start getting these defensive positions ready. I need to bolster, but not, not yet. Right now, I just need to get that morale and this fear down. I can't promote... So, um, I do want to send out supply runs. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to send out one, two, I'm going to send out supply runs early. I'm going to send out two for a supply run and I'm going to open a new supply route. Boom, boom. And I also, you know what? With two of with two of these over here, I actually don't need my commander. My morale will be at zero. I won't gain any benefit. But I could use my commander. No, I can't really. I could use my commander there. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to use my commander there. 
and I'm going to place two, so I've got them to add new supplies, and I'm going to start repairing because I need to eventually here. So let's get ready. All right, I've placed all my workers. Now I go to zero, mobilization first. Open a new supply route. Add delivery tokens to a new supply depot. These are the supply depots. I get to pick any one of these and place it there. If I place this one, it lets me remove a patrol marker from the board, which are gonna get placed at the end of this day. So I can do that. I can add miss, which is gonna let me, for each one that I collect in return, I get to add a miss tile to the hit bag, which is preparing for the future, helping me out there. Or I can place one or the other. I can place soldiers or morale. If I collect this, every one I bring back lets me raise my morale up. If I collect soldier, each one I bring back lets me collect a soldier from the reserve. Either one can be great. I like starting from left to right, so I'm gonna place the remove patrol um, as it, it helps me out later. And we've got our supply run coming up, so we're gonna be all right. All right, so I open a new supply route, boom, they are tired. Now I'm gonna negotiate for one and two. So I get to take this action twice. To negotiate, I'm gonna take my doubt down twice. Now we go to number one, defend the walls. I don't have anybody placed there, we're not doing anything. This should be down at zero. Fire, nothing there. So next we go to number three, or see how we're just following the numbers? Now we're gonna do our supply run. So we're gonna take our volunteers and place them out into our fortress. Now we get to actually carry out our supply. Hmm. Even if you don't place any workers here, you always complete the supply run if you have any of your recruits out on the map. So we're gonna move up. I'm gonna start collecting supplies first. So I'm gonna, I, how many spaces can I move? I can move as many spaces as are for the day. So it's a cloudy day, I can move one to five spaces. If it were a snowy day, I could only move one to four. Sunny day, I could move one to six. You'll see it says minus one movement if carrying a delivery token. So that means I can go, I can go one, two, three, four, five. Yay, right? Well, once I'm here, I get to collect one of the supplies. When I'm carrying it back, I have to minus one movement since I'm carrying something. So I can, even though it says one to five, it's minus one movement if carrying a delivery token. So that would be one, two, three, four is the most I could do. Another thing with movement, you have to stop when you get to a supply depot. So let's say I was here and I started the turn, I'm right here. I have one to five spaces to move. One, two, I have to stop my turn once I get to supply depot. The other thing that can interrupt you is if you run into a patrol. You try to avoid them, but you might not be able to. So let's say that there's a patrol right here, or right there, and I go one, two, three. I have to stop, and now I have some decisions to make. We'll cover it when we get there. I can sneak past them. I can fight them if I'm a soldier, or I can just stop and not risk it. It's our choice. So those are the things that can interfere with your movement. We'll cover that. All right, so I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna claim a token and stop there. I'm then gonna go one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna grab one of these so that I can rem You know what? I actually, I actually think I should start with removing recruits. I think it's gonna make it easier for me. I do. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna do both of those, cool. Good things happen. When these make it all the way back, we get to resolve what's down here. It tells us move all supply runs. We just did that. Resolve returning supply runs. So when we make it back and we're right here, once that, all the movement is done, we get to resolve. And that means we get to move the defender to the tired space so we get them back. We get to raise morale but we also have to raise suspicion by one. Then we get two supplies added, and then we get the benefit of the token. So there's a lot involved, um, or a lot to benefit from 
these supply runs. And doing them early is best because they get harder and harder to do as recruits and artillery fill up the board. Cool, we did our supply run. Now we move to number four, maintenance. We are gonna repair, and we can only do it once, remove one damage tile or unjam one status tile. So that means if this was like, let's say it was jammed like that, we could use this to flip that over. That's not the case, we'd have to repair it first, and I don't think the guns are as important as defensive position. So I'm gonna take this, put them in tired, and I put my defensive position A into the hit bag. You don't have to go left to right. You can do defensive position B or C. Doesn't really matter. All right, here we go. Boom, boom, boom. I actually like these better. Well, they look good over there. All right, number four, we would go to the infirmary. We always take care of this even if there's nobody there. So let's, I didn't put anybody to treat a patient. If there was an injured, let's say these two were injured, then I would resolve relapse and recovery. Move all patients in the waiting area down one level. So let's say I had one at number three. The only time that they would go in the waiting area, we'll go ahead and cover this now, is if they were injured and you rolled a three, we'll pretend that was a three, you rolled a three, so you had to place the volunteer in a bed in three. Well, three is all blocked up, so you have to put them in the waiting area. During relapse and recovery, First, you move them down one. That is not amazing or fun at all. Then you move all patients in the beds one level up. Fortunately, when you move them down one, if there's an available bed, you can slide them over. As soon as there's an available bed, you can slide them over. Then we would go one, one, one. Move all patients up one. Pretty cool, not bad at all, not at all. And finally, at the end of our day, we check our morale. Doubt marker, I get to raise it up by my doubt marker. There we go, I get to raise morale up by, oh, I did that wrong, mistake. I made a mistake. I, I was thinking, I made a mistake, but I'm not gonna backtrack and change the game. Um, I did my math wrong. Anyway, I should have kept my commander here on Inspire so that we, instead of repairing, so that we could have moved our morale marker up twice. Now I'm going to have to draw two low morale cards, in, but it's good. It's good for you to see this. That was poor, poor math skills on my part. All right, so I did that. None of these others apply yet. So I have to draw two low morale cards and resolve one. Let's hope one of them is the hope card. If you ever draw a hope or despair, you must keep that as one of the cards. Then, if it's, it's not. If it were, let's say it was hope or despair, either one, I would have to keep that as my card. Then I have a choice. I can choose to discard it, which means it might get cycled back in later. I can choose to resolve it, which is you may gain one supply to remove this card from the game. That's great. And then I would remove this from the game. If it's despair, you have to, you may injure one defender to remove this card from the game. That's great. Or you can place it in your reserve, which means you have to resolve it later. The rule book honestly isn't super clear on when. Um, I assume, I, I don't know. I, I, I honestly, that is one question I have. So if, if you're in the comments, sir, please let us know. Um, I've, I'm so sorry, I've emailed with you and I forgot your name. It's awful, that makes me feel so bad. Um, Peter, Peter Olson. I remember Trumpet Games, but I've got this designer, I'm so sorry. Um, I really try to keep remembering the names. But anyway, let me know some clarification that I might have missed it. It's probably in the rule book, I just missed that. So I assume if I put it in reserve that I have to resolve it. So in the future, like if I drew morale cards, it says, you know, draw two and keep one. That would count as one of them. So I'd only get to draw one more card. That's what I'm assuming is I can only have a hand max. I'm kind of making that up. I'm not entirely sure. Um, so that's one of the only confusions. Actually, that is the only one, um, which is pretty darn good. All right, I drew two low morale. I have to resolve one. You'll see there are three different sections. There is mobilization, siege one, siege two. You apply the one, 
for what is happening in the game. We are in the mobilization phase. So I can either injure one defender or add one patrol to the board. Um, oh boy. Right now, this early in the game, I think injuring one defender might be the better choice as opposed to adding patrols. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to discard the one I'm not going to use, and I'm going to apply this. I'm going to injure one defender. And I get to choose, so I'm going to injure a volunteer. Let's roll our dice. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Because of the low morale, someone behind fortress walls has been hurt. I don't love it. Place them in sickbed three. There we go. We resolved that, excellent. Now we look at our surrender terms. We haven't met any of these, so we don't have to move the surrender. We have five healthy defenders. We're still in the game. Now we apply the icons at the end of the day. We see there are two patrol icons. So we have to draw two patrols from the bag. One and two. One and two. They have numbers on the back of these bags. Three and one. Okay, so that means they're going to go on a number three and a number one. But which one? Well, you look at the color of the phase you're in. Mobilization is green. First attack is orangish. Siege is blue. And then the second siege is like orangish down here. So basically, mobilization, first attack, siege one, siege two. We're in mobilization, so green one and green three. Eek! Wow, the two worst positions that we could have had. Awesome, so we're gonna have to deal with them on our next supply run, but that's okay, that's okay. And we move on to day two. We're gonna move a little faster now that we've covered almost all the rules. Any additional things will be in the chapters. What's gonna happen? It's a sunny day. It's a sunny day in Hegra and we needed that. We're getting reports on German soldiers being placed around the farms on the way to Hegra. That's not good. Add two patrols. That is not good at all. Oh boy. One and two. This is a, a more challenging start than my last game. All right, number two, there's a patrol. And number three, just stack it on top. That means there's two patrols to move there now. Oh my goodness. All right. You must move the fear marker one level up to number four. That's not good. Let's add a d doubt disc. Our doubt is down here, so we only have to add one to the recruit bag. One doubt disc. And now we get to draw up to four. To four. Any that you draw and keep get placed and ready. One. There's one soldier. I'm going to draw another. There are three doubt discs in here. Two soldiers. I'm going to risk it. Please don't be a doubt. Thank goodness. And a volunteer. Whew. Stresses me out every time. All right. So two soldiers and ready. One volunteer. That means I get to add one supply. Now we get to see how the supplies work. We start here. So we've got all these people tired. We need to refresh them. So we're going to spend one supply, put it in your reserve. How many workers or recruits do you get to place in ready for one supply? Well, that depends where this marker is. It's at four. So that means each supply, one supply, lets me refresh four of my recruits. If it was over to the right, which it will be, then I only get to refresh three and then two and then one. So we want to keep this over. Here's the thing. This marker only moves to the right. I have not seen anything. Maybe maybe one of the cards, maybe one of the high morale. I don't know. I haven't seen anything that allows me to move that marker to the left. So good. I get to place four. One, I know I want my commander. I want my, uh, I want one medic and two soldiers. Good. That leaves three over here in tired. Now I have another option. I can spend another supply. It would kind of be a waste because... 
you know, I only have three to move over, so do I really want to waste one precious supply, or do I want to save it for later rounds? The other thing I forgot, at the end of every day, um, the morale track resets to zero. Go right back to where it was. All right. Here's what I can do, though. I can lower my morale by one to bring over two recruits. Is it worth it? I don't know. I don't know at all. Here's the other thing. I can place up to two. I keep calling them recruits. Yeah, they are recruits. I can place up to two recruits in rest. I don't get to use them this time, but at the beginning of the next day, those two move to ready. So it's two kind of freebies. So I could do that. I could do that and just leave one unused and be ready for them next time. I think I'm going to try this out. I'm going to try this out. I should probably map out what actions I need. Um, am I going to lose any morale? I'm done with this, so discard. I'm not going. I'm not on a red day, and I'm not going to be out of supplies. So I'm not going to gain morale, but I'm not going to lose it. Well, I will gain one morale actually, thanks to the doubt marker. So I'm good. I'm good. Um, I could even. I'm going to leave it alone. Yeah. Here's what I want to do. I want to get this fear down. So I'm going to put my commander here to negotiate. Fear will go down one. I want it to go down again. So I'm going to put it down, I think here, one soldier and I want, I want them back in action. So I think I'm going to place my medic right there. And I think I'll place another, another soldier there. So fear is going to go down by two. That's good. Now I always want to put somebody in a supply run and I think I want it to be a volunteer. Honestly, I don't want to lose too many soldiers. Um, and next I want <sighs> morale marker. No mistiles or defense. It needs to, I do need to get that up before the next turn. I do need, I do need that up once. So I'm going to put two here to at least get defense up one level. Because if I have an event and I have to move this defense down one tile, then I have to draw from the hit bag and that's always bad. So let's raise that up. That's everybody. All right, let's resolve this. Beginning of the day. First, we're going to negotiate. We're going to take the fear down by two. So everybody... Calm down. We're going to get this under control. All right, they get to rest up. Now, we don't do defending the walls. We're not firing any artillery yet. We're going to do our supply run. So we're going to move our volunteer out. That's right. They are going out amidst patrols. This is the scary part. So now we move all our supply runs. We can do this in any order. And here is... Here's the order I want to do it in. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. One roll with supply runs. Your recruits can never stop on another space with another recruit. Unless, of course, it's a supply depot. But other than that, they have to they can move through them, but they can't stop in the same section. That would just reaction suspicion. Alright. I'm going to stop there. It's a sunny day. I could move six, but I'm going to stop there. And because of that, I get to drop suspicion down to zero. So here's my options when I reach a patrol. I can stop, remove my suspicion by one. Or let's say I was a soldier. If I'm a soldier, I get to fight. So what I would do, what I chose, you know what? I'll do it actually. We're just going to no, because they can't stop at the same spot. Actually, this is tricky. This is tricky. You know what we're going to do? We're going to go here instead. One, two, three, four, stop. Lower suspicion to zero. I like that. Why does that matter? You're about to see. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fight. I'm going to move my soldier, so I take my supply icon here. And now we are going to fight, which means that we remove one patrol token. When you remove it, you put it back in the patrol bag. 
This is good because if you ever have to draw from the patrol bag and you don't have any patrols in there, if you need to place a, a patrol and there are none in the bag, you start, you have to remove the leftmost supply. So you have to remove one supply from the leftmost depot, whichever one it is. If there are no more supplies to remove, then you have to draw a tile from the hit bag. So you kind of want to keep the patrols under control so that when you have to draw, you have something to draw. Now, fighting. So our soldiers here, first thing we do is we remove like we just did, put him back in the bag. Now we have to do a suspicion roll. So we roll the dice and you guessed it, the dice roll you hope is gonna be higher than your suspicion level. So it's at zero. So no matter what, I'm guaranteed to pass this suspicion check. That's good. What that means is we end our movement. Whenever you fight, you end your movement no matter what. But since we succeeded, we end our movement and we raise suspicion by one. If, let's say this was at a one and I rolled a one, one, unfortunately that means I failed it. And when you're fighting, that means you got injured. So you remove this soldier, you do an injury roll, place them in a bed. You also lose this solution, which means you remove it from the game. Whenever you return a supply, you remove it from the game. Whenever you lose one out here, you remove it from the game. It's a big loss. You don't want that to happen. Also, since you were injured, you're no longer on the board, you get to drop suspicion by two. So there is some benefit to it. Not a lot. All right, good. So, stopped their movement. Here's the problem. Now, I can't stop movement there. It's not a choice, right? Because I've got a, um, a defender. I forget if I call them defenders or recruits. I think they're defenders. The recruit bag, I guess we'll call them defenders from here on out. We'll, we'll call them defenders now that they're out here. All right, so I'm gonna move here and I'm gonna do my other option, which is a sneak. Sneak is nice because I get to keep moving if I pass the suspicion rule. So here we go. One, two, three, and roll. Five. Hey, it's above a one. So what does that mean? We raise suspicion by one, and we get to keep moving. So that's one, two, three, four. So I moved one, two, three, four. I get up to six moves, but I'm carrying supplies. So it's actually only five, but you know what? I made it all the way back. That's awesome. So that was a successful supply run. It was tense a little bit stressful. We got rid of some of these um, patrol markers, fortunately, or one of them anyway, but I need to get rid of more. Now, what if I had failed that? So what if I had failed with a one at a sneak? Well, I get to reduce the suspicion by two. That part's good. Bad part is I had to take the defender and put them in the reserve. Eh, it's not good. So I'd have to, I'd have to find some way to, you know, replace them by bag drawing, which is really risky. So you do not want to fail these suspicion rolls. All right, now we get to resolve this. So move our volunteer over to tired. That's awesome. I get to raise morale by one. That's awesome. I have to raise suspicion by one. Not awesome. I get two supplies. Fantastic and I get the special ability. I get to remove any one patrol from the board, and I will, and again, this gets removed from the game, so we don't get to use it again. Who am I gonna remove? Um, they're not gonna need to fight, but I am gonna need to go back there at some point. So I think I want this one cleared first, boom, and then I'll clear, actually no, that's the next one, because we're gonna go there and have to come back Risky, so we'll remove this one from there. Place this back into our patrol bag. Boom. All right, finished our supply runs. Now, maintenance. We're gonna bolster. We can add a mistile to the hit bag or we can raise defense. I'm gonna raise defense. They both go to tired, and you're going to see when we flip this board, defense is very important. It helps you negate attacks from the infantry for each level that you go up. Alrighty, now we're going to the infirmary. I get two actions because I got a medic, so I'm going to heal twice. Boom, boom. Awesome. 
and you're tired. Now I resolve relapse and recovery. Nobody's in the waiting area. Move everybody up. I now have a healthy defender. Defender cleared. We recovered from that low morale card just fine. Now we go to our morale. I get to raise because my doubt marker is at one. I get to raise morale by one. Awesome. We don't have to take it down at all, according to those. Draw three high morale and resolve two. Don't mind if I do. One, two, three. These are fun to resolve. I love morale cards. Good. And again, if I had drawn a despair, there's one despair in here right now, I would have to keep that as one of the two cards and choose how to resolve it. High morale. We're in mobilization. Move two defenders from tired to ready. Okay. Or move the snow marker two mar spaces to the left. That could help me get a snow tile for cheap. Or move two defenders. I'm going to do these two. These two. These two. So I'm going to discard this. And if your deck ever runs out, just shuffle up your discard pile and start from the top. Flip it over, start from the top. Move two defenders from tired to ready. I will always need my commander and I will need a soldier for sure. So there we go. Discard. Now move the snow marker two steps to the left. Boom, boom. Don't mind if I do. Hopefully it's not a snowy day. If so, I will shovel snow and dig out one of these tiles. Um, in my first game, I focused on these tiles, and it, it paid off. I think I flipped over three of them. In my next game, I didn't focus on them at all. I never flipped one. Um, I didn't win either game, but I did better on my first game, honestly. Okay, but I also don't think I was playing totally right. You know, the first game never counts, so maybe that's why I did better. All right, we're at the end of that. Put our morale back to zero. We have five healthy defenders. We're fine. Let's go to our final day of mobilization. There's going to be a coup at the end of this day. I hope we can survive it. Nothing happened at the end of the day. There are no patrol tokens to put out. Here we go. Day three. What's going to happen? It's a cloudy day. We'll take a cloudy day. We need to bolster the fortress gate. Perhaps that will slow down the enemy. They are advancing. Remove one miss from the hit bag. Okay, that's not going to hurt me now, but these miss tiles are quite valuable later. What that means is in our hit bag, we have all of two tiles to draw. Artillery or um, defensive position A. If I drew defensive position A, I have to place it back, which means I have to repair it again. If there was a defender there, they would get injured. So I'd have to roll an injury die and put him into the sick bed. So these missed tiles are, don't, don't underestimate them. They are incredibly valuable. Not only that, this is my last turn to add, because remember, I'm going to flip this board. This is my last chance to add supply depots. Ah, oh boy. You really want all four out. You really do. Scary. Scary, scary. I got a lot I got to do. I, I also want to start defending the walls this turn because on my next turn we're going to have an attack. So I want to fix a gun. I got too much to get done. I got too much to get done. Anyway, we add a doubt disc to our recruit bag. Two, three. Only one because our doubt is down there. I get to draw up to four. Let's see what we're going to do. One, it's a doubt. So this is good that that happened. If you draw a doubt as your first one, then the next one that you draw that is not a doubt is the one you keep. Two doubts. What are the odds? Oh my goodness. There's only four in there. All right. Hey, I want a hunter. They are actually quite useful, um, especially for shoveling snow. Shoveling snow and supplies. So here's the thing. When you have a hunter out here, they, they don't suffer the minus one movement penalty. So they can carry su supplies and do the maximum movement. That's useful. All right, so he is in the ready. I gained one recruit. I didn't gain any volunteers or supplies or anything like that. Oh boy. So I move my two rested over here. I'm gonna spend one supply in order to get four recruits out. I'm definitely gonna need soldiers. One, two, and three. I don't actually need medics, so I will put them in the rest. So now, do I want to spend 
Do I want to spend one morale to move my... To, I think I do. I don't want to waste the supply. Because my morale is going to come back up by one. And it's not a red day. So I think we're going to be alright. Granted, that means I don't get to draw two high morale cards. I love that. But I want all the workers I can get. So morale's going down by one to move these two tired volunteers to ready. And I still have three supplies. So I, I feel the best about this. Because we need to use everybody for this round. Let's do a test run. I want to place a soldier here and here for my defensive positions. I want to negotiate to move the fear marker down one more. I want to open supply routes. Absolutely. Um, so two volunteers to the supply route. And I want to do it twice. So we're going to do a soldier and a worker. Because I want all the supply routes filled up and open. It is my last chance to my last. And then I have, I want to shovel snow while I'm here. Granted, it's good to use the hunter, but I don't need to go left two spaces. I only need to go left once. So let's, yeah, let's put a soldier there. Let's send out a supply run with my hunter. And that leaves only one. So what would be the best thing to do? I could, boy oh boy, what would be the best thing to do? I could send a soldier, a second soldier out on a supply run, or I could place the hunter and the soldier. If I put them all here, then I would actually get to, no, I wouldn't get two snow tiles anyway. So I think that's what we're going to do. Patrols early. Patrols early are important. Um, and that's that's just what we're going to do. Yeah, that's all we can do. Let's carry it out. For firing at the Germans, defending the walls, um, we don't actually have to carry that out until we get to our first attack. So they are just ready for the next turn. So let's go to zero. Open a new supply route. Absolutely. We're going to place all our mistiles here. One, two, three. And what do you think? Should I place soldiers, recruits, or should I place the morale? I think the morale is extremely valuable at the end, so I'm going to do that. Although I tried that in my last game, and I lost my last game. So, who knows? I think they're more valuable. I don't know if you can mix and match, maybe like a total of three. I don't think so. I think you have to pick... All of one or all of the other. Okay. Take those out. And we are done with the supply route. You're all tired. Two, three, and four. Negotiate. Move the fear marker down one. He's tired. And shovel snow. We are going to move it to the left one. Awesome. So you're tired. That means I get to flip over a snow tile. Well, I'm going to shovel that up because now I know what it is. Cool. New supplies. All right, so I gain new supplies. I'm going to shuffle these up the best I can. That gun, too, would have been nice. I've, I've never actually had the gun, too. All right, snow tiles. And I move this over to three. It tells us right there. I gain two new supplies. I'll take it. Three, four, five. So we now have five supplies. I put one cube there, and I have those to use. New Move this from the game. Alrighty, anything else? Infirmary, nobody's over there, so we do our morale adjustments. I get to go up one because of my doubt level, and I don't have to go down on anything else. I don't get to go up on anything else either. Takes us to the end of our day. We do our uh, surrender check. I have five healthy defenders or more. We're fine. And, and that includes all of them. That includes everybody out here, everybody that's not in the infirmary, basically. Um, or the morgue, which is part of the infirmary. So now we get to move the turn marker, but first, of course, we check for our patrols. Oh my goodness, I didn't do our supply run. Wow, gravy bodega. Um, so actually, this would still be at negative one. We don't, we didn't mess anything else up. Oh my goodness, good. Send out a new supply run, there they are. Now we actually move all the supply runs. I'm gonna move you up and collect one. 
Great. I have to stop their movement there. We're going to move you back. One, two, three, four. It's a cloudy day, so up to five, minus one, because he's carrying something. There we go. Now, i got to send him back out. And I kind of want to... I want to lower suspicion and, and get supplies as well. So here's what we're going to... We're going to go one, two, three, four and up to five so we're going to go here get supplies early okay i do tend to go left to right i don't know if that's the wisest thing um where's the soldier going to go the soldier's going to go here one two three four are we going to fight and risk the roll no i'm at three i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do that so i'm not gonna sneak either I'm just going to lower suspicion by one and stop my movement. That's all I, yeah, that's all I can do. And I'm okay with that. So now we get to resolve returning supplies. Awesome. So you get to rest up, Mr. Soldier. You did an excellent run. That was scary. You got around patrols. Now we get to move a defender to the tired area, raise morale up by one. Awesome. And raise suspicion by, back up by one. So it's back up to three. Gain two supplies. I love it. And the special ability, remove one patrol. I'm going to remove this patrol. And place it in the bag. Then we remove our supply token from the game. All right. Good job. You made it back to the fortress. But look, we've still got three out there risking it. And... When we get to the end of this turn, now we can do things in the proper order. Now we can come to the morale track. Oh my goodness. And we go, we go, we went up to zero. We get to go up by one because of doubt. None of these apply. So we don't have to go down and that's good. I get to draw two more high morale cards and resolve one. Hey, it's two high morales. Awesome. Look at the top card of any event deck. So that means mobilization, first attack. Siege 1, Siege 2, or The Last Stand. I get to see what's coming. Or add two new volunteers to the recruit bag. Or gain one supply. I like adding two new recruits to the recruit bag. Absolutely. Increase my chances of... To me, it is nice to know what's coming in future events. It's very valuable. But this one is more valuable. So discard. And that's what I'm going to do. Add two new volunteers to the recruit bag. Don't mind if I do, y'all. Don't mind if I do. Okay, move this to zero. We don't meet any of the surrender conditions. We have to add two new patrols. So that's where we were when I realized we forgot to do supply runs. All right, here we go. One and two. We're still on mobilization. So they go in the green line, that's two fives. So here you go. Boom. Ah, that's a great place to put them. I never have to go there. That's just an optional route. That was that was fantastic. I love that. Um, thank you. And we go to our first attack. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the perfect place to stop. We've made it through mobilization. Hegra. It's hard. It's cold. But we haven't had any snowstorms. We're getting supplies. We're defending our walls. When this first attack comes, we're as ready as we can be. I'll see you in the next video. I love you all. See you next time.